Is there something blocking your personal growth? Have you evaluated it and know what it is? Hi, I'm Gina here at Hope & Cope. We talk about essential skills that we need to have our best life in spite of painful and sometimes even tragic events and situations. I hate to tell you this, but some of us have a big problem. But the good news is that there is a solution. First, we're going to discuss some of the common reasons why we have stunted personal growth. And the main reason that I'm going to talk about today is when we let other people stunt our personal growth. I had a bad habit of saying, I can't do this because Rob won't do that. I can't do this because Rob is away. I can't do this because Rob is using. I can't do this because Rob's not with me. I went through that a lot in our early years and it was really unpleasant and held me back a lot. For some people, we blame our family or our job. We come up with a lot of other reasons why we can't do the things that we feel like we're supposed to do. I remember early in Rob's addiction, I felt like I couldn't do anything. I felt like I had to stay home and watch him or manage him. I felt alone because where I had had his support and we were very close before the addiction, I felt now like I did not have those things and I was trying to adjust to being on my own spiritually and mentally and emotionally. For a good while, I felt very justified to not be doing the things that I felt like I needed to do, to not be growing in the ways that I felt like I needed to be growing or committed to things that I felt like I needed to be committed to. I honestly felt quite paralyzed by the anxiety and the grief and the sadness and the loneliness. So it was very hard for me to push myself outside of that. I want to encourage you, my friend, to know that if you will think outside the box, you will find a way to still be your own person and to grow in the ways that you want to and to fulfill the things you feel like you need to fulfill and to pursue the things that are your priorities. They just might have to be modified to an extent. They might have to be postponed a bit. They might need to be looked at from a different direction. But what I don't want you to do is get stuck from the time someone is in an addiction, get stuck and never pursue your own priorities. I am one of those people that it's hard to not see things in black and white and just all or nothing. And if I have this vision of something I want to accomplish or this priority, if I can't have it the way I want to have it, then I just can't have it at all. But if you will think about it, if you will be open-minded and try to think outside that box, just tear that box apart and pray about things and put things in God's hands and ask him for the creativity that you need to pursue these goals, these priorities, these things that are part of who you are, that are part of you spiritually and emotionally and and in the relationships you have with other people, then I think good solutions will come to you and you will be able to Even if they're modified, you will be able to have those things in your life to the extent that they still are fulfilling and you still feel like you are your own person and that you are growing with God at the at the best possible rate you can. So many times it's not that there's not another way, that there's not a plan B. It's just that we devalue our own selves and our goals to the extent that we just dismiss them all together and we don't even try. But it's important, very important for us to realize that we still have to nurture ourselves and our families and our children. I remember a time I was on my way to work. I was in my car, of course, and I was just thinking about some goals and some things I wanted to achieve and I just felt like I couldn't do it without Rob, without him beside me, without us partnering. And I felt the Holy Spirit say to me quite clearly that 
if I need something in my life for me to pursue my goals, that God will give it to me. And if I don't have it at that time, then I don't need it to pursue those goals. If God has brought these things to me and they're important and he wants me to grow in these areas, he will help me in spite of what I don't have. That as long as I have him, if I, as long as I have the Lord, then I have what I need to still pursue my goals and still be the person that he's called me to be. That I can't use the excuse of my husband's not well for me to not be the person that he's called me to be. He still wants that separate relationship, that individual, that personal relationship with me. And he still wants me to grow and pursue the things that he's put into my heart. And it helped me to realize that he is really the main thing I need. And that if there is anything else that I need for that goal to be accomplished, that he will bring that to me. And so I started to look at the things that were important to me through a different lens. And I started living again. I started making goals. I started doing things with my church or through my church or for my church and for my family. And I started making personal goals and I started doing things that I felt like were meaningful and that God was with me and he was helping me and that if there was something I needed for that goal to be accomplished, he was gonna make sure I got it. I know it's really hard, dear loved ones, when our hearts are torn in two. I'm not trying to say that it's easy. I hope this content was helpful to you. That's always my desire. And that's the same thing with the video I have lined up after this one. And I also try to put encouragement in the description box for you every time. And if you like this video, if you would hit the thumbs up button, I would appreciate it and share it with a friend. I'm putting out content twice a week these days. I don't know how much longer that'll be, but I look forward to seeing you in those videos and I'm praying for you. And until next time, God bless.